In Matthew 24, Jesus is telling his disciples the signs of the end times. And he's telling them in Matthew 24 and 13 that those who endure to the end shall be saved. But what does enduring even mean? I remember years ago, I did a quarter marathon with a friend. We were walking most of it. We hadn't really trained too much, but we wanted to do this quarter marathon. And so we walked most of it and we ran some, but we endured to the end and we overcame. We crossed the finish line. It was a great moment reaching that pinnacle and people were cheering us on and we're cheering them on and we're, we're excited to have that come to completion. Now, in our own lives, there's things that we are enduring. We're enduring tribulation. We're enduring chastening or the disciplining, the correcting of our Heavenly Father. We're enduring the wait to wait for things that God has promised us. We're enduring the pruning and the purification process so we can get closer and closer as God is transforming us into the image of His dear Son. Now, what does it mean to endure? According to Miriam Webster, it means this. The ability to withstand hardship or adversity. The ability to withstand hardship or adversity. So you're withstanding something. You're standing your ground. You're waiting on the Lord to deliver you, to rescue you, to continue to go on. But you're living your life. You are contending. You are warring. But you don't stop there. You don't die there. You don't lay in the towel. You're continuing to move forth. You're continuing to progress. And we learn contentment in the waiting process. But we're withstanding some sort of hardship. Like I mentioned, the, the quarter marathon. And for some of you, that would be no big deal. You're like, I run marathons in my sleep. The endurance and the stretching, he takes us from glory to glory. And we continue to be stretched. We continue to be refined. We continue to be pruned and purified. Merriam-Webster also says that to endure is this. The ability to sustain a prolonged, stressful effort or activity. I think about a dog who's bearing down on, on a bone that he's trying to get from somebody else. You're holding onto that bone and the dog has his teeth in there. He's standing his ground. He's got his teeth on there and he's not letting go. He's not going to give up. He's going to get that prize. He's going to continue to endure. And it's something in him that says, I can't let this go. It's in him. It's his instinct. But within us, it's the Holy Spirit that said, no, God said I can have this. God said he's for me. And so who can be against me? God said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God said nothing is impossible to him who believes. So I will continue to endure. As I stand on the promises of God, if I don't have a promise with that thing, God's not said that it's for me, then the grace is not there. But if the grace of God is on that thing, then I can continue to withstand the forces that are coming against me. I can continue to withstand and I can bear down and I can bow down before my God and say, Lord, help me. I surrender to you in this thing. I bow down before you, Lord, and I accept you, Lord. I need your help on today. I'm surrendering this thing to you and I know you are a good God. You are an awesome God. So I'm allowing you in this moment, Lord. I want to lay down whatever is not for me because it's not going to be fruitful, but if you said this is for me, that I can do this, that I will endure. I will continue. And I want to say on today, salvation is yours. That's something that we need to, must endure in the saving of our souls. Matthew 24 and 13. So Jesus has talked to his disciples. He told them the signs. He told them about the false prophets that would come forth, the false Jesuses. But what? Matthew 24 and 13. But the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. This is the King James Version. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. The same, that same. They shall be saved. Let us endure to the end so we shall be saved. Let us endure in this thing because we can overcome. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you for your help on today that you will empower us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to continue to go forth. Help us to continue to war. Help us to continue to fight because the battle is already won. You've already called us into this thing. And so we know that we can do this. We know that we can have this. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. God has given us the power 
to generate wealth. God has given us the power to do what we've been called to do. We will win if we don't give up. We will win if we keep going. And I know sometimes it's hard, there's this resistance, but the enemy's already defeated. And so the biggest lie that he tells us is that you can't do that, you can't have that. If God says we can have it, we can have it. If God says we can do it, we can do it. So we shall go up and possess the land. We shall continue to go and overcome. We shall save many souls. We shall do the work that God has called us to do, amen? And we're not gonna back down because the enemy is trying to get us to, to shrink back. One of the, the greatest things, and I love the guy who talks to me about this, was that if I've said you can do it, I'm not resisting you in that thing. If God has said that you can do something, he's not trying to stop you from doing it because he's released you. And so the resistance we see, whether it's us or it's the enemy, it's to say, God, you said that we were to do this thing. And I know you're not wasting our time. I know you're not playing games with us. So Father God, help me in this because I know you're a good God. You're faithful and you're just. And you said for us to do this thing. You said for us to go into the land and possess it. You said this. So if it's not working and God has said something for us to go forth, what is it, Lord? Because it's something else. Because if God said we can go in and have that thing, then God's not the one stopping us. Is it sin in the camp? Like it was with Joshua after they won the battle of Jericho, there was sin in the camp. So they lost the battle at Ai. And then it was, uh, they had to deal with that. The sin of the man that had taken these possessions he wasn't supposed to take, they weren't supposed to take anything. And so is it that or is it the enemy resisting us? What is it? But that we would figure out because God is not trying to hinder us within what he's told us to do. Now, if he didn't say for us to do it and we're off doing something we're not supposed to be doing, then God could be trying to stop us because we shouldn't be doing that thing. And it's in his grace and his mercy that he's trying to stop us from us. The Tower of Babel, they were building this tower to make a name for themselves. God had told them to disperse, to go into the earth and subdue it, to multiply. And they were like, no, let's build this tower of Babel and then we'll stay together. And so God confused their language. It was for their benefit. Nothing was going to be impossible for them to come together. They had this demonic line. They weren't supposed to be doing that. They were supposed to be following the word of the Lord. So we want to endure in what God has told us to endure. Because if we're enduring in something that God has said, no, I don't want you to do that. I have a better plan for you. I remember so many times in my life, God opened doors. He created things for me that weren't there before, that he opened up because he said, I have this for you. It's not that thing over there, but this is for you. And this is going to work. And as you let go of that thing that I've told you not to do and go into this thing that I'm calling you to, it's going to work. It's going to multiply. It's going to advance. And yes, there's time, seed time and harvest. We don't want to abandon something because it looks like God's not in it when really God's in it, but then there's a resistance and there's a time it's got to mature and we have to be ready for the thing so that we can actually do what God has called us to do. So God help us Lord to endure what you called us to do. Help us to abandon those things that you've not told us to do and help us to endure to the end so we may be saved because you have a plan for our lives. You are a good father. And I'm going to end with this because some of you may have stumbled upon this and you don't know the Lord. We need Jesus Christ in our lives. He's a good Savior. God is a good God and Jesus is a good Savior. We need Jesus Christ in our lives, to be the head of our lives. So I want to invite you to say this prayer with me. If you somehow stumbled upon this and you don't know Jesus Christ for yourself, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die upon a cross, to pay a debt he did not owe, and remission of our sins. We ask you, Lord, to be the Lord and Savior of our lives. Help us, Father God. We invite you in, and we ask you, Lord, to forgive us for our sins. We confess you as our risen, risen Savior, and we believe unto salvation. And we ask you, Lord, to receive us on today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. You are saved. I invite you to continue your journey. Find a Bible-based church that you can go to and serve at your local church. 
Also, I encourage you to uh, get a Bible that you can read and study the Word of God to advance yourself in the things of the Lord so you may be successful to follow the commands that God has for us. And may God is with you. He's for you. You know, the grace of God is available to us on today. He loves us and he cares for us. So I encourage you to continue to go forth. Congratulations on your decision to follow the one and true living God and Jesus Christ, his son, as the head of your life. Your life is going to be so much better as you follow Jesus Christ. You will be victorious even in the trials. You will be victorious as you follow him. Be blessed.